an altered book art journal flip through. Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and today I'm going to show you my altered book art journal. I wanted to try making an altered book and we were going on holiday so it seemed like a good idea to spend my holiday time making a journal of my time on holidays with my art and the last time we were on a holiday I found a book on the beach. Now this was Germinal by Emile Zola. It was full of sand, it was very very soggy and wet and was never going to be fit for reading again so I thought I could turn that into a journal. So I did and here it is. It's very fat. <laughs> I took lots of pages out but it still ended up very chunky so i took some little bits and pieces that we found on the holiday i got some beads and a bit of old clay pipe stem and shell tied it all up so it doesn't keep opening completely it, i don't think it will ever close if i put it like that it's rather splayed and you can see it's really struggling at the binding but it's holding together i made a cover when i got home it wasn't the perfect cover, I got some glue splodges in places, but I think it's nice and it's very sea themed, so let's have a look inside. The Great Vacation. Now to start this page I put some pieces of magazine that I'd cut out on the background to try and thicken it up a bit. I'd already glued three pages together because it was quite flimsy from being in the sea. I scraped some acrylic and some gesso over it and I really liked the finish. This galleon was actually part of a vintage colouring book that I had that had fallen apart. So ooh, I thought that suits this very nicely. So that went in. And I found this little bit of dead seaweed, so I popped that in too. And words from a magazine and also Vacation, which is a junior Scrabble game. Most of the pieces were missing. I removed the thick cardboard from the back because it was just too chunky. And glued them on. They didn't want to stay on. Took a bit of glue in that. And that was my first page. Now, I was limited with the words that I had from magazine clipping, so I had a look to see what would suit the fact that we went for a day out to the seaside. Now, out there seemed to fit, and I made these little tags. This was when we went to Dolgetle and paid £2 parking. You can see it's in Welsh. And this, we went to Carnarvon, which is where I found the pipe stem piece that you saw on the ribbon holding the book closed. I didn't decorate the backs. I was going to, and then I never got round to it. And I could do a lot more now I'm home, but I like to remember doing most of it on holiday, so I'm not going to fix that. I'm going to leave it as it is. And it also reminds me, because this is the part of a Cadbury's Buttons Easter egg, that it was Easter when we went. Well, just before, but we snuck an Easter egg. This tag here is part of a dryer sheet. Whenever I'm cleaning up my acrylics, I use some old dryer sheets to rub all the acrylic off and give them a good squidge and let them dry. And I end up with coloured fibre, either as a sheet or here. I tore it into strips and I've made myself a fibre ribbon. Into the pockets, we've got two pockets, one either side. On my next art journal, I'm going to do it on camera and show you how to make all these little pockets. It's really easy. I like the sea colours on here. The sea is always such a pretty colour, so it seemed like a good idea to mimic the sea a little. Lots of ice creams and the sunshine. Now this is when we were at Carnarvon Castle. Here are a few of the things that I found at the castle. We got some pipe stems, some bits of sea glass, some shells, and I made a plastic window and then I rather vigorously dried it with a hairdryer and shrunk it. So there's a little hole now. So Somebody said, oh, it adds to the vintage look, so I'll go with that. I just drew a quick sketch of Carnarvon Castle, very basically, and some Celtic knots with um, stenciling. But 
to get this step for the window it took forever and a ton of glue because this page is this wide i needed it to be wide enough to accommodate some shells and things so i glued and glued and glued page after page after page and then i cut out the square and after i cut out the square then i glued another page onto the back and that seemed easier than trying to cut it out and leaving a thin bit on the back i'm pleased with this i'm just very frustrated that i did that and on the next page I was just trying out some pockets this is my first altered book and so i'm trying all the different techniques so we've got some tags here again this here is a uh, old dryer sheet and some tags here as well this actually took six pages you had one page two page three pages four pages five pages six pages but really simple when you understand the principle behind it. So easy to make. And then I just decorated it and put flowers and things on. I didn't have access to a lot of bits and pieces. So I was working with what I had. Then I made this. It's a bit like a Dutch door. But it's not. It's more, I suppose, like a flap. I drew a heart there and then I cut it out. And then I continued the heart on the page behind. And I was a bit stumped what to put on it. I just fancied doing that. So I put amour, love. That's the French for love, in case you didn't know. And when it's open like that, you can see the stencil. I just love black on the background. I don't know why. I think it looks lovely. The only problem is I did get a few issues with me getting the pages stuck together because I couldn't wait properly for it to dry before I wanted to get on to the next page. And there, this heart is actually hiding a big bludge that got stuck to this page. But we won't tell anybody. Shh. Now, this page, we were supposed to be going to France. And we couldn't go because of the Covid situation. So I had this picture of a bike that I brought with me. And a little bit of an old map of Paris. So I decided to put in a sort of French theme. Although we weren't in France... It made me feel a little bit French that evening. And so put fun and do what, do more of what makes you happy. And what makes me happy is going to France. <laughs> but I also enjoy the beach, so it was still a really good holiday. Again, a background of lots of bits of magazine. Went over the top with a bit of gesso. And it just gives it a little bit of depth rather than just being plain and flat. You've got a little bit of texture. Then there were the Easter eggs. <laughs> we had a Cadbury Buttons Easter egg each. And I made a little frame out of the boxes and put some metallic acrylic and brown acrylic. I just cut out a few bits and pieces. And this is the wrapper from the actual egg. Just to remind me that we had Easter eggs while we were on holidays. And then we went to McDonald's. Now, I don't go to McDonald's very often, but we were on holidays. We were running really late coming away from Carnarvon Castle. We were starving hungry, so we decided we'd go to McDonald's. We had to queue up. It was just go in. You could pick up your food. You couldn't eat it at McDonald's, but we ate it in the car. And I brought the box home and the bag and made this pop-up. I love my pop-up chips. It doesn't take a lot to make me happy, and I just think that's real a bit of fun. Why not? You might as well have a bit of fun when you're journaling. So I really enjoyed doing that. And it was good because it taught me the principles of making a pop-up, which I now know, so I can do it with anything I wanted to. I wanted to make a page of things I found on the beach. We found a lot more than this, but these were pretty and thin enough to go in my journal. I thought it was already getting pretty chubby without putting anything too big in. So some words I had were wave dance, which I liked. And this is a little bit of orange bag that I had my oranges in when I always have an orange for breakfast. So on holidays, this was a bag they came in. So I glued it in there and thought it looked a little bit like a fishing net. I know it isn't, but it does look like. And then we've got a little bit of rope that I picked up off the beach. It's a plastic rope, so it was good to pick it up off the beach anyway before something ate it and was very ill. And also it made a nice little addition to my journal. I tried to make the beach with paint, but 
in a very abstract way. I didn't want to try to copy the beach. I didn't think I was capable anyway to draw a beach that was a really good beach scene. But I like this. So we got a razor shell and some little bits and pieces, a little shepherd's purse here, and some empty egg cases, more under there. And while I was away, I ordered some new wellies because my wellies had holes in. Well, they started with holes in, they ended up with the whole heel fell off. So I got myself some new jewels wellies. So I put that in as well. And it's nice with a little bit of tag. The wellies actually came with this little ribbony tag thing on. So I thought it was quite cheerful. Now this, I had no idea where this was going. I started the colouring on it under here before the bubbles or circles were on it. And I really didn't know what to do. So I fiddled and fiddled and kept adding and changing. And I ended up with this. Now these tags... I put some positive stickers on, so work hard, dream big. And these little bits here are actually bits of fishing rope, again, that I picked up off the beach. In all different colours. They were very thick, so I had to untwine them a little bit. They make a really nice addition. Do it now! Ah, now the sticker's fallen off this. It wasn't sticking particularly well to the acrylic. <laughs> Let's see what this one's supposed to say. Oh, this is my favourite sticker from the whole pack. It says, excuse me, I have to go be awesome. That needs some glue. Pop it in. I'll sort that later. Right, what have we got on this one? If not now, when? Oops, things are a little bit stuck. Stay positive and never, never give up. Again, a book with two pockets. Again, a page with two pockets on the layout. And so easy to do and looks so impressive. I really like this. Turn it that way so you can see all my coloured tags too. One evening I didn't really have much to put in other than a few parking tickets so I decided right here we go we'll get out the rest of my Paris map and some little pictures I had in a brochure and put them all on and made this so again <laughs> I could pretend I was in Paris I really like adding the dark around here around the edges of the different things I stick in I think it makes them stand out less or like it's a setup with lots of vintage or antique things on a vintage or antique background. There, I don't know if you can see it, is a kitchen roll heart. I cleaned up some paint with my kitchen roll and I noticed it was a heart shape. So I cut it out, popped it in there and, well, <laughs> you can't really see it but I know it's there. Right, so this is just a bit of fun. For one evening, I got lots of bits of vintage paper and glued them to the sheets. And then I did a nice coloured background. And there is a little bit of texture there with a very thin layer of gesso. And these are from my um, antique colouring book or vintage. I think it's probably antique. It was very old and very delicate. As you can see there, I tried colouring Mr Noah's trousers. Made a bit of a hole. He needs a patch. And then I found this little bit of cardboard glued on summertime dive in the unknown seas and that I think is I think it's Weymouth <laughs> it's not where we were and some sharks on the back from a sea life center so I added these beads on a piece of string and then what I did was glued all this over the other end of the piece of string that's going through the page so that way then it didn't stick out on this side. I suppose I could have come up with something clever with some string and beads this side, couldn't I? So if you wanted to pull it down to have a closer look, you could. And then slide it back up. And then the last page of the journal. Yes, the holiday and the journaling had done its job. I was well and truly relaxed. Another picture from my old colouring book some bits and pieces off the beads. I got them all put together on a 
very modern, cheap and nasty hat pin. So these bits were on there, I took them off, flattened them out, popped those on. This is something I cut out of a magazine. This is as well. And I did put some gesso on this page and then as it was drying, I run the end of the paintbrush, the wooden end around and made a little bit of a swirly whirly pattern as well. Just seemed like a good thing to do and then added some dots too with a bronze metallic marker. And then I got to the end and look at the size on that. It's never going to close, but oh, it's fun. And I love the feel of the acrylic paint and the gesso on the pages. It makes them feel so solid. I love this as a memento of my holiday. And it has made me decide that whenever I go on a long holiday, I'm going to make a journal, probably from an altered book, because there's so much fun to have. It's not just the collecting bits. It's all the mechanics of gluing pages, cutting pages, coming up with designs. So yes, I'm definitely into this altered book business. Video, then why not subscribe you'll get to see more videos from me and you will also see a lot of the techniques that I've used in this altered book if you're tempted to try yourself I'll see you all next time but until then don't forget draw every day and have fun bye